I'd like to call to order the Planning and Zoning and Building Committee. Roll call, please. Alderman Catalano. Here. Alderman Jacob. Here. Alderman Messina. Here. Alderman Sorrentino. Here. Alderman Szymarski. Alderman E. Wesley. Here. Alderman R. Wesley. Here. And Alderman Woods. Here. I declare a quorum. Next, I want to approve all the minutes. Uh, I want to make a motion to approve the minutes of the Planning and Zoning and Building Committee I'll regular meeting, so April moved. the 13th, 2017. That is my motion. Second. Any corrections? No corrections. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Okay, next report recommendation 1500 North Michael Drive, uh, driveway uh, with variation. Assistant Director Christine. Go ahead. This is assistant Director? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, so many of you may remember this is a, a curb cut variation for a property that we uh, saw somewhat recently. So I'm going to quickly just run through. It is for 1500 North Michael Drive, um, which is located at the corner of Lewis and Michael Drive um, in the industrial park. So it's currently improved with a, about a 100,000 square foot industrial building and has some surface parking. The requested variation is for a driveway width variation. And if you'll recall, the proposed Redevelopment is for a 100,000 square foot industrial facility. Um, and uh, recently, the council approved a height variation for the building of up to 40 feet. And so the request tonight is to, I guess there is no pointer, but it is for the curb cut on Lewis Drive, which is on the left hand side of the screen. They're requesting to take the existing curb cut and widen that a bit where our code allows 34 feet at the property line and 44 feet at the street. So currently the driveway is 24 feet and 45 feet. And the request is, as you can see, 62 and a half at the property line and 81 feet at the street. You will notice that unlike um, many properties, there's actually kind of a shortened parkway. Um, so to be able to make the, put the flare in for the driveway they do need some additional width, but the goal here is to allow trucks to um, more efficiently access the, the property for its intended use. Um, and so they did provide some truck turn diagrams to show the need for getting those trucks in and out of that location um, on Lewis Drive. The CDC did recommend approval, finding that it was consistent with the UDO and also consistent with the comprehensive plan. It all, they also found that it met the variation standards. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, well uh, first I'll make a motion to approve. Make a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Next is items to consider for uh, at future meetings. UDO text amendment, park and nonconformities overlay. That's gonna be uh, in May or June and Forndale Corridor Rezoning, winter of 2018. Any other um, items to consider? Next, I need a motion to adjourn. I'm sorry. I'll make the motion. Wait, wait. Go ahead. Under the wire. Go ahead, Mayor. Yeah, if uh, we can get an update on all the annexations. How many letters went out again? I don't recall, but and how many? I think there's only three that came in so far. This is just informational. We don't need to have a meeting on this. And do we have any in the process? Just. Uh, Alderman, Alderman Woods? Uh, I was going to make the motion to adjourn. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. We're adjourned. Okay, I'd like to call the Public Works Committee to order. Let the minute taker reflect the same members are present. Uh, first, I'd like to make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of April 13, 2017. Do I have a second? Second. second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Next, uh, report and recommendation approval of a contract with HR Green to provide landscape design and plans for the northeast uh, corner of Illinois route, Illinois route 19 and Wooddale Road and not to exceed amount of $24,458.81. Matt? Well, it could be. I'm just... Oh. 
see if Matt has something to say here since uh, it's a topic topic of interest with everybody. All right. Thank you, Alderman. Um, yes, this is just uh, a couple months ago. Uh, we had HR Green here. We went through a couple different concepts of um, what we wanted to see on the northeast corner. Um, this is to finalize the uh, landscape design um, for the concept two. And if you remember that, that was the uh, one with the land or uh, limestone brick uh, paver um, planter bo or box um, with um, flagpoles and trees and some bushes and flowers that would uh, mimic that of the uh, clock tower side. Um, this is just the uh, design um, and plan so we can get this um, put to bed and get it down to um, Springfield so that they can um, get it on the June letting so we can get this project um, let at the same time as the um, clock tower project. Uh, Alderman Eugene Wesley. I, I just said one point. Why, why would they have to go down to Springfield? Mr. York. Because we're going to let it um, with the clock tower. So it's going to be all as one project. So the clock tower is, has uh, federal funds associated with it. So we have to go through the DOT IDOT process. Um, and since this is all getting wrapped together as one large project, it's got to, it's got to go through the same uh, framework. Okay. My question is how, how may I? Sure. Go ahead. So my other question is how, how soon are they going to have this design? Because Springfield is going to be shutting down in a couple of weeks. Mr. Yark. Well, it's going to get, I mean, as soon as we get this approved, we can get it down there. There are um, just a little bit of plan that need to be completed with this. If Springfield shuts down, I mean, Springfield shuts down and the clock tower project is going to be delayed just as long right. as with every other project. So, I mean, we have to, um, we have to live with the concept that they're going to be there when we send them stuff. And if they're not, then we'll be delayed like, like everybody else will be. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve. The Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That Aye. passes. One. One no. uh, next, approval of contract for local limits development from Robinson Engineering in an amount not to exceed $25,250. That is my motion. Do we have a second? second? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? That passes. Next, approval of change order number one for the fiscal year 2018 roads project in an amount not to exceed $92,889.35. That is my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Next, approval of replacement of chain link fencing at the Northwest Water Treatment Plant and, uh, by uh, complete Northern Illinois fence in amount not to exceed $20,963.00. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Questions? Questions? Mr. York. Um, I guess I have the same question as you did um, because when um, this project was designed, um, was before I got here, uh, that fence is in disarray. Um, so that's why we, we wait until the project was completed and then we um, put in the CIP um, to bring it forward um, at this time. So. Um, Unless somebody else has got an explanation, Mr. Rumors, maybe. Mayor, please. If I remember right, uh, the original brick wall was probably a quarter, or third of what it is right now. And when we did the groundbreaking, we said, why aren't we going all the way through? We're going to have chain link fence here. And we extended that one. The question was asked about at the time for the side. It was fairly okay. Everybody said, okay. So, council, I know. We never came forward to bring it to the council to do it, from what I remember. But we kind of stopped. I remember. Mr. Mermis. Uh, 
memory serves, I believe that's like 75% correct. Um, what it was was the uh, brick wall, the brick wall surrounding the rest of the treatment plant is obviously not allowed where the current fence is because well, of the proximity to the creek. Correct. And there were some, while small, there were some cost saving measures considered by the council. And I think one of them may have been at the time to not replace the fence, as you said, because the fence was okay. Um, I remember there were some wiring and some other things that maybe equated to like $100,000 or so that was some cost saving items. This may have been one of those items if memory serves. It, it was, it was yeah. on the list. It was yeah. one of those items that we considered because there were so many extras. Alderman uh, Roy West. But during this whole project, we were told that this is staying below budget, correct? Mr. Mermis. Well, the project was on budget and now it's time that the fence is no longer as good as it used to be. You know, the project actually took probably what? Groundbreaking has been 12, so five years. Okay. I just find it kind of odd that we wait this long to bring this fence up now. So. Mr. York? Yeah, the, the reason, the rationale was that um, after the completion of the project, uh, we put it in um, as part of a normal maintenance process for the plant. Um, just because the plant is new does not mean that we're, we're stopped spending money at the plant. There's going to always be normal maintenance opportunities down there. Um, so we put it in the budget um, in the, as a CIP item um, two years ago. Um, so this would have been the second year that it was budgeted out in the CIP to be replaced at this time. So. Um, it's kind of the rationale on this side of why why we waited till now to do it instead of doing it right away. Well, uh, I'll add one comment. One, one of the other things that happened too, because as they set up the site, which was a tight site for construction, that that uh, was an area that had a tendency to have material and trailers and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that there was some premature uh, deterioration of the fence due to some of that or expedite it. Uh, anyway, uh, Alderman Jacob. Uh, and looking at the drawing here, I, I see that, um, you know, there's, it's, this is all going to be a black fence, first of all, correct? No. No, no that's incorrect. Okay. W just, is it just that red part that's going to be black? Yeah, um, basically it's going to be um, a small section, a red part, uh, maybe around that corner just a little bit um, will be um, the black fence, kind of when it goes out of sight from the roadway, that's when it's going to turn to chain link fence. There will be a, there's going to be a man door back there, a man gate, uh, in case we need to get around there and do some maintenance work. Um, but that first section, so as we go straight back from Irving Park Road and then we turn that corner a little bit, it'll be black for just a little bit around that corner. And then when it kind of goes out of sight, then it will be chain linked, just this regular silver chain link the rest of the way and all the way around to the back. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Catalano. How many feet is that that we're replacing? Mm, 600 and 638 feet. Right. Yeah. yeah um, right. Did, didn't we look at putting a, like a screen there instead of a, like a... They can't. Yeah, we can't put a structure there. So we can't put like a fence area, or like I uh, like the brick. Anything brick that'll feed the or impede the flow of water. Yeah. So it has no, to be no. some sort of chain link. No, and I not, wasn't going to do like those. Talking slats about the cloth, through. like that vinyl. Yeah, those slats and stuff. He's talking about the slats. Yeah, um, I'm not a huge fan of those slats. I think. It or. Looks, um, you can't see it yeah. Okay. I mean, base. Basically what you're looking into is part of it is the building that's still there, the old chlorine building that's used for storage. There's some um, cell phone equipment that's right there, but that black will kind of blend it in a little bit nicer than I think the slats would. Or the sc or screen. Or screening, yeah. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? And do we have a motion? Yes. Okay. Gene and, uh, second. Second. All right. So uh, we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Uh, next items to be considered at future meetings, Irving Park Road uh, ornamental street lights, May. Maher parking lot uh, cost share agreement in May. 
Comrade Ash Street, May. Salt Creek Stream Bank Stabilization RFP in June. New Public Works Building Space Needs Analysis in June. Veterans Park Memorial Landscaping, June. And Stormwater Cost Share to be determined. Uh, Mr. Uh, Eugene Wesley. What was that stormwater uh, cost share we were looking at? Mr. Mermis. That was that item in the CIP that the council tentatively funded, but you wanted us to bring back the guidelines of a proposed program before any money would be spent. So this would be figuring out if the council wanted to do the program based on proposed guidelines. It is, was that the, the backyard with the check valves or whatever? That, it's similar, yeah, okay. similar to that. Uh, any other questions or any uh, mayor police? I think I mentioned it once about the uh, ornamental lights on Wooddale Road from, but it's probably not even going to bother until next year. So, I mean, as long as you guys have it written down somewhere, I won't bring it up because I know it's not in our budget. So no use discussing yeah. lights yes, on Wooddale are, Road right now. Yeah, uh, we're planning on putting that um, towards the CIP for next year, if that's right. okay. Yeah, no, no, okay. fine. I, listen, it's got to go in the budget before you okay. do anything. Alderman Roy Wesley. Mr. York, uh, last year one of the pine trees died over by the sewer treatment plant. We replaced it. Same one's dead. Yeah. When are we, we, we get that replaced? Mr. York. Yeah, we're um, in constant communication with um, Williams Brothers about there's um, that and there's also some brickwork that needs to be done over there. Um, there's a manhole cover that needs to be done. So we're, we're still in communication with them. We're still under warranty. So we're, we're in the process of trying to get that all resolved. Okay. Okay. No further questions. I make a motion to adjourn. Uh -oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Call the Finance and Administration Committee meeting to order. Let the minute taker note the same people are present. And <clears throat> make a motion to approve the minutes from March 9th of 2017. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Next, report a recommendation, municipal aggregation renewal. And I think Mr. Wilson would like to talk about this one. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you may recall about six weeks ago, uh, we came to the committee uh, stating that our program was going to be up in July and that we had until May 10th to make a decision whether to continue the program or discontinue the program. At that point, uh, the committee gave staff direction to go out and get indicative pricing, uh, whether or not there would come in below ComEd's pricing, um, you know, such that we want to continue the program. Uh, through our uh, consultant, NIMEC, Mr. David Hoover here. Uh, they processed the bid for us. We got the indicative pricing back today. I believe that was emailed out um, earlier this afternoon. I do have hard copies of the pricing and the memo uh, if anybody um, should happen to need that. And there was one provider that came in uh, pretty aggressively with pricing. Uh, Dynagy Energy came in and their pricing uh, for a one year, well, let me back up a second. ComEd just released their new rates for the next year, and the blended rate for that 12 month period was 7.185 cents. This was a significant increase over their current price. I believe it was about 15, 18% above their current price. Uh, the Dynagy pricing uh, for a 12 year program came in at 6.665, which was uh, about 7.8% below the blended ComEd rate, and they did have a 15-year quote that was 8.4% below the blended ComEd rate, 15-month, sorry, 15-month uh, rate. Uh, the only concern with that one is, is the last three months would be exposed to whatever ComEd does with their rates the following year, so there's not as much of a guarantee as the, on the last three months on the back end of that deal. Uh, so that being said, uh, if the council, you know, uh, were to wish to continue the program, staff would recommend going with the 12-month Dynagy pricing, uh, should that be the will of the council. Any questions? Okay. Well, I'll make a motion. Second. Make a motion that we move forward with uh, Donergy Energy. To 
deliver our services for a 12 month term, right? Did we, 12 month okay. term? Uh, Alderman Wesley, did you have a question or are you no, still? I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Alderman Catalina? So, what happens as far as the, the residents? Are they going to be notified or is it automatically done or do they have to fill out paperwork? How does that work? Um, so, for those residents who are in the program currently, plus anybody who's at Commonwealth Edison on yeah, those. Like I'm sorry. Sure, I'm sorry. I apologize. My name is David Hoover. I'm with NYMEC, okay. and uh, we've helped uh, manage these programs uh, for the city for about five years now. Um, so, re any resident who's on the program or with Commonwealth Edison will be informed by a letter. Uh, it'll come on the city's letterhead. Uh, paid by the supplier. Um, anybody, and approximately a, th a quarter of the community has already left uh, to go uh, manage their own individual rates and, and own individual programs. We respect that. We don't trump that, uh, but we will send them a letter to just to notify them, so there's no confusion in the in the in the marketplace. If residents don't, these residents who get the mailing, um, if they take no action. Uh, if they don't opt out, in other words, then they will automatically be included in the program and will move from your current supplier constellation to uh, Dynagy. But it's all built under the ComEd rate and uh, on the ComEd billing, and you have to look pretty closely on the bill to find that. Thank you. Mr. Wilson? Yeah, and the other um, I don't know, thing to just remember is that anybody that moved into town since the initial program started, if they didn't do anything on their own, they've just been on ComEd, and so this would pick them up as well if they hadn't made a, an election on their own. So if they didn't know anything about it, they would automatically get picked up in this in this process for the next year. Anybody that moved into town within the last <coughs> three years that didn't make an election otherwise. Mayor? Just in case anybody's wondering, I, got, I brought my bill here tonight just to see what the difference is. The 15 month was $4.66 savings, 12 months was $4.36 savings, providing ComEd is charging you the 7.19. They could possibly with that, uh, what is that? Uh, it's called the purchased electricity adjustment. That's it, the purchased electricity adjustment could go up or down. So basically, ComEd's price could be basically half a cent cheaper, which is just above what this new rate is, or it could be half a cent higher, anywhere in between, correct? Correct. Go ahead. And if I could just state, so basically the ComEd rate, rounding numbers, anywhere from 6.7 to 7.7. 7. Um, if you were to accept the Dynagy rate, you would lock in savings for the average homeowner anywhere between 5 to $100 over the next 12-month period of time. Alderman Messina. Some multiple questions, but so what is this rate that the, the mayor is referring to? Is that a fee on top of? So if we save with Dy uh, Dynergy, mm -hmm. we could still get hit with a fee from ComEd? Um, that's, Go ahead. that's not correct. Okay. Uh, the fee that we, the, the rate that we charge is a flat rate. It's set, it's, it's in stone. Okay. okay. And, the, and residents will get that. If a resident were to take its uh, power delivery from Commonwealth Edison, they would be charged the 7.185 cent plus a purchase electricity adjustment charge on top of that. Yeah. And that can swing anywhere from a half cent positive to a half cent negative. Okay. Making the ComEd rate, as we said, anywhere yeah. from 6.7 seven to 7.7. Seven, seven. That's the adjustment. And so the ComEd rate kind of does this month to month. Okay. Whereas we set a benchmark that people can understand. Two more questions. Go ahead. So the, you mentioned about the supplier paying. Are we talking then uh, Dynagy paying for these mailings? Correct. Okay. And then the final piece was with new homeowners. How, what mailing system are you using to reach out to these folks? Because I know we've had issues of not hitting people in the past. Yeah, so we use Commonwealth Edison's mailing address um, list. So Their mailing list? Okay. Yeah, if they're getting a bill from ComEd, they'll get a notice from us. Is there, is there a chance we can scrub that against, I guess, our water bill rate? Or is that, I guess, Brad, you know best, but is that more comprehensive than what we use? Yes. Mr. Wilson? 
Yeah, in, in the past we've used the, the ComEd list and, you know, we want to get the bill to whoever's, or the notice to who's paying the bill and who's right. on record with ComEd. So that's why we default to ComEd's record keeping for that. Okay. And if I can, it's worked well. That that we've had, we have not had issues with those. We've done about a hundred of these uh, aggregations on multiple renewals, and it, I, I assure you, it'll work fine. Great, thank you. Alderman E. Wesley. I just have uh, actually two questions. Does this affect the businesses in town too, or no? It affects small businesses, and the definition of a small business is a usage threshold. Um, I could tell you that it's 15,000 kilowatt hours a year, but it's basically dry cleaners and smaller. Okay, and, and, and what about the, our city facilities? City facilities, again, if you have small facilities like an aerator and a pond, yeah, that will be included in that. But anything above that, which is 99% like of your volume, okay. that's managed in a different uh, arrangement. Good, thanks. Mr. Wilson? Yeah, I was just going to say uh, to Mr. Hoover's point, we have some accounts uh, with the city that are on the city's municipal aggregation program. We have some that are bid out through auction with Constellation. We have some that are just on ComEd, and we actually have two accounts on Dynagy right now that have been bid out through, uh, through NIMEC as well. So depending on the usage thresholds is what program they get bid out under, and there's different rate structures and different terms for, for those uh, different agreements. Just a quick question, Mr. Wilson. You just mentioned we have several on different plans. Why aren't they all on the same plan? Why do we have several <coughs> different plans? Sure, because uh, based upon their usage, um, they're in different strata, and then they get bid out at different times a year uh, by Mr. Hoover and NIMEC, and whichever company at the time of the bid has the lowest bid or the best pricing, most favorable pricing, most favorable terms, that's who we go with. So, uh, God bless you. So it has a lot to do with uh, timing and then also the utilization, which strata they fit into and how they, they bid them out. So, and we've generally saved quite a bit of money. Uh, I think we started the auctions with IMEC probably seven to eight years ago yeah. for the city facilities. That's worked out uh, very well uh, for the city since then. Okay, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to make one other comment for any elected that might have might not have been on the council at that time or any residents listening. This discount is only on the supply. So if anybody gets, receives a call, the discount only comes at the supply, delivery, taxes, and fees naturally do not change. And I have one more question. Um, <clears throat> it seems like lately throughout town we've had solicitors soliciting energy. Um, once we approve this, are these people going to go away, or is it still going to, even though we, the city signed, is basically doing it for 12 months, are we still going to have those people walking around town? Or um, That is really a decision based upon, you know, an independent business making an independent decision. The fact that you put an aggregation program together will discourage them, um, for sure, but that doesn't mean that they will, they will disappear. Just curious. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Okay, we had a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes. Uh, next, items to be considered at future meetings. Um, water, water meter price code update, May or June. Water rate discussion, July. IMRF elected officials resolution, July. Vehicle sticker, October. Would anyone else like to add anything? Okay. With nothing else being said, I make a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. That passes, we are adjourned. <laughs>